Hey, it's Jared. In this video, I'm going to give you my 30 day experience with the Galaxy Ring. It's been a great experience, but I have some thoughts on the Galaxy Ring, their first generation in a ring type wearable device, which I think they've done a good job. There are definitely some interesting things that they did that I think are very smart and then maybe some other areas that are amiss. Now, in another video, I'm going to compare the Galaxy Ring to the Ultra Human Ring Air which I've had for over a year now and have had a great experience with this ring. But I took a break from it so that I could spend some time with the Galaxy Ring because I thought maybe the experience of Samsung bringing a new product in, something that's gonna be very well integrated, or at least I hope would be very well integrated with their operating system on Android and of course their own UI. I just wanted to see what that was like. So I had to get my hands on one and I've spent the last 30 days with it. So let's start with my initial experience, which was opening it up and finding this beautiful charging device that also is a ring box. I think Samsung knocked it out of the park with this. This has to be the killer feature that they've released because I've had both the Aura Ring and the Ultra Human Ring Air and the charging experience on both of those rings is less than desirable. This has a built-in battery so it can charge the ring up to two or three times from pretty much dead and then you just charge it USB-C and it's also just a nice carrying case and it lights up and when you put your ring in it, it lets you know how much longer it has to charge. I mean, it's just a pretty cool overall experience. And the ring just looks good in there. I think they did a great job designing this. I mean, it's completely clear all the way around. And it's it almost looks like, you know, something that my wife might have with a little bit of makeup or something like that in there. But overall, like they really knocked it out of the park with this ring box that also acts as a charging device for your ring as well. So beyond that, let's talk about the ring. Now the ring is titanium and it's very lightweight. This is a size 10, which is the ring size that I wear and it fits really well. The ring has three sensors here, which are represented in these three bumps, very much like the Aura Ring. The Ultra Human Ring has one big sensor in the middle, whereas the Aura Ring and the Galaxy Ring have the three sensors here. And so it takes a little bit of getting used to feeling that because if you're used to wearing a wedding ring or uh, any other sort of, of ring, typically there isn't any, it's, it's just nice and round all the way inside. And this has a couple of little bumps, which takes a little bit of getting used to, especially if your ring ends up fitting a little tight. Now I wear, like I said, a size 10 ring. And even though the little bumps are there, I think that's factored into the sizing of the ring. Because whether I'm wearing a traditional wedding ring or this ring, they fit about the same. And same could be said about the other smart rings that I've worn. So I feel like as far as sizing goes, it's pretty true to size. So unless you are very unsure as to what ring size you wear, probably don't even really need to order the sizing kit and take that time to figure it out. I feel like if you're confident in the ring size that you wear, it's going to work out well if you just go with the same ring size for the Galaxy Ring. So the Galaxy Ring comes in three different colors, titanium, black, silver, and gold. I went with the titanium black because that's just the color that I like. I feel like the silver was a little too bright and the gold definitely not my cup of tea. So I didn't go with that option. Now the Galaxy Ring has an accelerometer in it and that accelerometer is what's used to measure your steps, to measure activity and all of that good stuff. We'll look at some of that data here in a minute. Now what's great about that accelerometer is the way that it works is it will actually measure your workouts and start tracking your workouts without you having to go into the app. Now obviously it's going to have to be able to figure out what type of movement that is. It's really good at running and walking and stuff like that, but it's not good at stationary things like stationary bicycle. However, it is pretty good at treadmill tracking. So it tracks most of those workouts, but the Samsung app also allows you to manually enter workouts as well. So if you're thinking about this being your only fitness tracker that you're wearing, it may capture most things, but it's probably gonna miss a few. You still have the ability to go and manually enter your workouts. And we'll look at what that looks like here in a few moments. Now it also has a skin temperature sensor as well, which is gonna measure the temperature of your skin. Primarily it tends to do that while you're sleeping so that it can look for any abnormalities that your body may have had while you were sleeping, like being too cold or being overly hot. And I, I don't know what that data necessarily signifies. I guess you might be able to tell if you're got a cold coming on or something like that, or be able to tell whether something is taking place in the middle of the night that might be affecting your sleep if you're overheated 
or just too cold. But it's nice to have that information nonetheless. It also has the PPG sensor, which uh, pretty much every other tracking device has that measures heart rate. The PPG sensor is the acronym for that technology that flashes the light into your skin and measures the blood volume and gives you your heart rate on your smart devices. And so that's what that sensor is for. Now, Samsung advertises a seven day battery life, which I haven't really been able to get out of the ring itself. I have been able to get a lot of battery life if I put it on the ring charger, maybe while I'm showering or something like that. And it adds maybe 20, 30% back into the ring. And if I do that every day, then I never end up having to go and charge it from, from zero. So every day when I take a shower, I put it on the charger. It's on the charger maybe for about 20 minutes to a half hour, depending on what my morning routine looks like that day. And the ring is pretty much charged up all the time. And on two different occasions, I've tried to see how long it would last based on the level of activity that I have. Now, I work out five to six days a week for at least an hour, sometimes as much as two and a half hours. And so during a workout, especially once it has identified that a workout has started, it's going to be running the sensors a lot more often. It's gonna be tracking things uh, like your heart rate continuously instead of just periodically. And so the more active you are, the less battery life that you're going to experience out of your Galaxy Ring. And that's pretty consistent with smartwatches and pretty much any other wearable out there that tracks fitness data. The more active you are, the less battery life you're gonna get out of it. Now the Galaxy Ring has an IP68 rating and a 10 ATM rating as well. So it's not only water resistant, but it's also dust resistant also. So going swimming, Diving down even relatively deep is not gonna be a problem for this ring. And looking at its construction and everything, I wouldn't see that there would be any sort of a problem either. Now, obviously, any piece of technology, if you submerge it for a long period of time, just the pressure combined with what might be in the water may start to erode some of the device itself, and that's when you might have some sort of an issue. A device like this, I'm almost certain you could probably swim for hours on end, even to a relatively decent depth and not have an issue. Whereas a smartphone might also be IP68 rated, but submerging it for longer periods of time because it has things like speaker grills and USB-C ports and other ports for microphones and stuff like that. It might not be as good at maintaining that IP68 rating as something like this ring. So I don't see this ring being any sort of an issue at being submerged for long periods of time. Now, considering it's titanium and it's also got some technology in it, it's extremely lightweight. Depending on the size of the ring, it's between 2.3 and 3 grams. I'd say this is probably closer to about 2.7 grams, but it feels like nothing. I have other rings, including a titanium ring from Ridge, and I feel like the Ridge ring is a little bit heavier than this, and I'm totally fine with that. This ring is extremely lightweight. I almost don't even notice that it's there. Now it's using Bluetooth Low Energy 5.4, and that's some of the latest low energy Bluetooth technology that's out there, which is probably what contributes to this getting a pretty decent battery life out of it. Even though it is running sensors a lot and it's doing a lot, considering how tiny the battery is inside of the device, the Bluetooth 5.4 technology helps it just sip on that energy and barely use anything for transmitting data to your phone. Now, one of the major downfalls of the Galaxy Ring is that it only works on Android. There is not any iOS support for it. So if you're looking for a smart ring for an iPhone, I definitely recommend checking out my Ultra Human Ring review. I also did a comparison of the Galaxy Ring to the Ultra Human. So if you wanna see what the experience is like there, including looking at the app data, side by side, you can check out that video after you finish this one. So let's take a look at the phone and the apps that are available for this ring. Now the Galaxy wearable app is one app that you're going to need. It shows that my ring has 1% battery life, which I didn't think that it did. I thought it had more of a charge than that, but we're getting pretty low. Just basic ring information. If there was a software update, you would find that here. You can use find my ring to find its recent location and its connection to the Samsung Health app, your Samsung account, and all of that good stuff. Now, where you're gonna get all of your information is in the Samsung Health app. You can see here that I have my energy score, and it right now is a 76. This is gonna change throughout the day as I continue to use more energy. My score is gonna go down, and this is gonna help me determine how much sleep I should get. If I have a heavy day and my score has gone down significantly, then I need to sleep more so that I could bring my score back up. It also gives me factors as to what goes into that score. 
For example, I got an excellent on bed wake time consistency and my sleeping HRV, but only a good and a fair on some of these others. Like my previous day activity was pretty heavy. I worked out pretty extensively yesterday. And so I had a lot of activity and that's contributing to bringing down my overall score today. And so lots of good information there. We have my heart rate during sleep. So it shows me that throughout the entire night. Also the variability, my skin temperature during sleep uh, for some reason says no data, should show data there, but it doesn't right now. And then we also have my respiratory rate that it's measuring also. Now, if we look at workouts, it did auto track some of my workouts. These are treadmill runs. And so it tracks those treadmill runs. This is kind of accurate. You can see it says 40 minutes and 19 seconds. That was actually closer to a 48, almost a 50 minute run. And it says 3.45 miles. It was closer to 4.5 miles. And so though the auto tracking, I'm glad that it has that data. It didn't track the entire run. And it also was a little bit different of a reading than what I got off of the pedometer that's on my shoe that connects with Zwift on my treadmill. And so that data was a little bit different. And I've also been wearing an Apple watch sometimes and also the Galaxy Ultra watch. And I have to say like the Galaxy Ultra watch tracks a little bit differently than the ring, even when you're wearing them both on the same arm. So I'd have that watch on, I had the ring on. Obviously everything's moving the same when I'm running or walking and the ring seemed to trail behind just a little bit. So I don't know what the contributing factor is there. Maybe it's the fact that the ring auto starts and stops and maybe even stops tracking in between a little bit here and there, which provides some sort of variability. I'm not sure, but I do find that the watches are a more consistent tracker than the ring itself. You can see that I have a biking activity here. This is one that I had to manually enter because I was on a stationary bike and the ring did not know what to do with that activity. And because of that, it doesn't have all of the information in here. It doesn't even show my heart rate during that workout. Whereas if we look at the auto tracked workout here, you can see that I have a chart with pace and heart rate there, heart rate zones, and a lot of additional information. So if you are going to do some sort of a workout and you want better data and you don't think your ring's going to track it, it's best to start that activity here. And you can see we can start tracking those activities here. For example, I could turn on run tracking and you can do that by tapping any of these, including a big list of stuff here and adding additional ones as your favorites as well so that you can more easily get access to them. So three of them can be enabled there and you can change those out for other favorites that are available. We then have our basic tracking steps, minutes of activity, calories consumed and calories burned. And that's automatically going to track your phone would track that information by itself if you had a watch and of course the ring does as well. You can see it's tracked my heart rate and it gives me a heart rate range here and I can tap on that and see my heart rate range per day, my latest information. It shows a graph over the day. It shows some heart rates at some specific time intervals that it tracked. And then it also gives me some trends below and I can do a manual measurement at any time from within the app. It has my sleep score, which it rated as excellent. I got almost seven hours of sleep. You can see it gives me factors here as well as to why it considered that excellent. It shows me my sleep stages down here. I could also see my blood oxygen. And then there's other information in here that the ring doesn't track like snoring, but it does give me my heart rate. It gives me my respiratory rate. And then I can see my sleep consistency on every day, going to bed and getting up around the same time, my achievements and all that good stuff. As we move down, we've got a sleep coach, medication tracker. These are just basic features of the app, not features of the ring itself, including our ability to track our calories consumed, our weight, cycle tracking, water consumption. Those items you manually enter into the app and are not a feature of the ring itself, just of the Samsung Health app. We have the AGEs index here, the ages index which is tracked with the Galaxy Ultra watch. And I haven't been wearing that this last week, so I don't have any data there. And this isn't going to show anything because it doesn't work with the ring itself. It just works with specific Galaxy watches. We have a stress tracker here, which I feel is a little weird. It just goes bang, bang, bang up and down. My mentality, my stress, my anxiety today has not been like that. I've been pretty relaxed all day. I didn't even work out yet this morning. So I've just, even my body hasn't been taxed yet. The app here is suggesting that I've gone from low to high and low to high. 
and then I've had what looks like a pretty emotional day back and forth. And so it gives me an average and obviously gives me tracking on all of those days. You can see I've been wearing the ring for quite a while and gotten that information. Then we also have my blood oxygen during sleep that it shows there. We also in the app have our ability to compete with others who also are using this app. We have fitness videos and then my page, which has some badges and all that information that's there also. So the Samsung Health app is okay by today's standards. I'd say it's pretty much on par with what you'd get in the Apple Health app or probably in the Google Fit app. There are lots of third-party apps that are gonna provide a lot more detailed information that's gonna pull information from either your Samsung Health app or maybe your Google Fit app if you're on another Android phone. But overall, I think the Galaxy Ring does a good job. For the price that you pay, I don't necessarily know that I would choose to go with a ring over a watch. That's probably gonna be the thing that people are going to be thinking about is, should I go with a smartwatch or should I go with a smart ring? I have to say the smart watch is gonna provide a lot more data and I feel like that data is a little more accurate and you get more data because the watch has a bigger battery and it's just a bigger device that can track more things. Whereas the ring is fairly limited and it has to prioritize battery life, which means it's not gonna be tracking on as fast of an interval as a watch would. But if you're wanting to go completely minimal and just wear a fitness ring so that you can track things and not have to worry about maybe a watch or even carrying your phone, the Galaxy Ring does a good job at manually tracking activities and actually getting some of that data in as well. And of course I can go in and fine tune that data. Even though it didn't get my full run, I could go in there and edit the start and stop time. I can go in there and edit the amount of mileage so that that information is accurate. However, in order to know all of that information, I'd have to have some sort of other tracker to measure it in the first place. So I guess nothing's really perfect, but the Samsung Galaxy Ring is one of the most minimal tech devices that you can wear for fitness tracking. And I think it's a great option for those that want something minimal that does a decent job at tracking information. So the Galaxy Ring right now is $400, $399 in the US. That's its price. It comes with this amazing ring box slash charger that I think provides a ton of value. But for $400, you can get a pretty darn nice smartwatch as well. And a smartwatch offers a lot more utility than a smart ring alone. So let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. I've got links to the ring in the description so that you can check that out. The color options, the pricing, all of that good stuff. Use the link in the description. Let's talk about it down in the comment section. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you back in the next one. Take care.